In this lecture, we're going to be discussing amines. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to classify amines as primary, secondary or tertiary amines. Explain the melting boiling point of amines in terms of intermolecular forces. Explain the solubility of amines in terms of intermolecular forces. Explain why amines act as weak bases and predict the products when amines react with mineral or carboxylic acids. Right, so far we've covered alkenes, haloalkenes, alcohols, ethers, carboxylic acids and our second last one to do is amines. Right, amines are organic compounds containing nitrogen and they can be classified a bit like alcohols and haloalkanes as primary, secondary and tertiary amines. <coughs> However, there's a subtle difference in the way that we classify them as primary, secondary or tertiary. Right. Here's an alcohol and this is a tertiary alcohol. And it's a tertiary alcohol because the carbon, which the OH group is attached to, is attached to one, two, three different carbon or alkyl groups. So you learnt how to do that in higher. And in advanced higher, you looked at haloalkanes and you classified them as primary, secondary, and tertiary. Again, this is a tertiary haloalkane because the carbon to which the halogen is attached is attached to one, two, three other carbon or alkyl groups. Now, if I replace the halogen with a amine group, so instead of having the bromine, let's put a NH2 group there. It's tempting to say that that's a tertiary amine, but it's not. That's a primary amine. Because when it comes to amines, you don't count how many carbons are attached to the carbon which the amine's attached to. You count the number of carbons the nitrogen is attached to. So this nitrogen is attached to two hydrogens and one carbon. So this is a primary amine. So it's quite easy to get that mixed up because you use the technique you've learnt for alcohols and haloalkanes. So remember the technique is slightly different when it comes to amines. You look at the number of carbons attached to the nitrogen. So if there's one alkyl group attached to nitrogen it's a primary amine. If there's two, it's a secondary, and if there's three, it's a tertiary. Right, naming amines. Well, an amine will have either one, two, or three alkyl groups attached to it. So you just have to list what the alkyl groups are. And as always, you list the alkyl groups in alphabetical order. So ethyl will always come for methyl, etc. And if you've got two methyls, as usual, you refer to that as dimethyl, but the D wouldn't make it before ethyl in alphabetical order. So, have we look at that and try and name that amine. So, we've got a propyl group attached to our amine, so that's propyl amine. Okay, try naming this one. So this time we've got two groups attached to the nitrogen, a methyl group and an ethyl group. 
the ethyl goes before the methyl in the naming so that's ethyl methyl amine and this one we've got one two three methyl groups so that's trimethyl amine this is a primary amine just the one alkyl group this is a secondary amine one two alkyl groups and this is a tertiary amine okay so let's look at the physical properties then we'll have a wee look at the chemical properties of the amines and as usual with physical properties we're mainly concerned with melting boiling points and solubility so what we find is that primary and secondary amines will have a much higher boiling point than tertiary amines or of alkanes of a similar formula mass so what's that about well here we've got a primary amine so nitrogen attached to two hydrogens and a methyl group so it's methyl amine the NH bond is of course very polar giving rise to hydrogen bonding and so you get a hydrogen bond between the delta negative nitrogen of one molecule and the delta H positive uh, of the hydrogen that delta plus of the H of the other primary amine and a similar thing happens in secondary amines so that's why primary and secondary amines have a higher melting point and boiling point than alkanes for example of a similar mass but they also are higher than tertiary amines so if you look at a tertiary amine of course there's no NH bond so you don't have hydrogen bonding in a tertiary amine you get it in a primary amine you'd have it in a secondary amine because you'd have one NH bond but in a tertiary amine they don't get hydrogen bonding between the amines because there's no NH so you don't have the hydrogen bonding into molecular force in the tertiary amine and so that has a far lower boiling point than primary and secondary amines of a similar mass so the reason as always comes down to it's hydrogen bonding between the amines and you only get that in primary and secondary amines if we look at the solubility uh, it gets slightly confusing now because what we find is that small primary secondary and tertiary amines are all quite soluble in water so and that's because all amines primary secondary and tertiary can form hydrogen bonds with water now primary and secondary amines would just form what I'd call uh, conventional hydrogen bonds with water the positive delta positive nitrogen attracted to the so the delta negative nitrogen be attracted to delta positive H of the water but you still get this rather unconventional hydrogen bonding between a tertiary amine and a water molecule because of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen so that lone pair makes that nitrogen slightly negative and it can form a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen of the water we came across this in the ethers we found that small ethers uh, even though ethers don't have hydrogen bonds between ethers you get hydrogen bond between an ether and a water molecule because of the lone pairs on the oxygen of the ether being attracted to the hydrogen of the water molecule so we have come across this concept before so when it comes to boiling points it's just the primary and secondary who have the enhanced higher boiling points due to hydrogen bonding between the amines which the tertiary can't do 
But when it comes to a hydrogen bond between the amine and the water, primary, secondary and tertiary can do that because of the lone pair on the nitrogen. So, as in say alcohols, the small ones are soluble in water, but as the alkyl groups get bigger and bigger and bigger, it will get less and less soluble in water because you're increasing the size of the covalent part of the molecule. Okay, and finally, just a very brief look at the chemical properties of amines. We don't get into them in too much detail. And the main chemical property to be aware of is the fact that amines are weak bases. And they're weak bases due to the lone pair on the nitrogen atom. So the lone pair on the nitrogen atom allows them to accept a proton. And if you remember from way back in Unit 1, the ability to accept a proton is a definition of a base in terms of Bronsted-Lowry theory. So it accepts a base, it accepts a proton, so amines are bases. So if they're bases, they will react with acids, uh, react with carboxylic acids or ordinary acids, which in the learning outcomes are referred to as mineral acids. That just refers to acids which aren't carboxylic acids. So HCl, nitric, sulfuric, etc. So it will react the Amine being a weak base will react with the acid to form a salt. But just the only thing to note is, unlike a normal base, you know, a metal oxide, a metal hydroxide, a metal carbonate reacting with an acid, you only get the salt produced. It's not a salt plus water because well, there's no oxygen around to form water. So the base accepts the proton, making it CH3, NH3 plus, and it also accepts the conjugate base, the Cl minus. So you end up just producing the salt, methyl ammonium chloride. So that's really all you have to know about the chemical reactions of amines. There are weak bases, so they react with acids, but you tend just to have that one product because it will accept the proton and the conjugate base to form a salt and just a salt. By now you should be able to classify amines as primary, secondary or tertiary amines, explain the melting boiling points of amines in terms of intermolecular forces, explain the solubility of amines in terms of intermolecular forces, explain why amines can act as weak bases and predict the products when amines react with mineral or carboxylic acids.